Hey everybody. Let's see, I got a couple of people here. And uh, so if you're here, let me know. Just uh, drop me a comment in the uh, uh, comment section. Give us a like. Hope everybody's having a good Friday. Wait for a couple more people here to, to come in. Mom, I almost put up back here a sign that just said, Hi, Mom, and I'm just going to leave it up there. Hey, Eddie, good to see you. Or better yet, Jay, I know what I should do. I should have. I, what I should have done was screen print the shirt with the ink we're going to use today. Mm -hmm. It was just a white shirt it with high mom. Yeah. And can everybody hear us okay? Almost, we've got about 10 or so people in, so we'll wait a couple more minutes. So um, while we're kind of waiting, if um, if you didn't see our post or email that we um, uh, that we put out, um, we're actually going to be doing some photographs today. And so if you want to see a photograph of yourself, um, send us in. Uh, you can email it in. Or uh, just drop something in the comments. We'll get you the, the contact information uh, to send it to myself or Jay. Um, and you can send it to us, and we're going to put it onto a T-shirt. We'll show you how to do that, um, along with some other creative ideas. So um, if you're out there watching, please send us a photograph, because I really don't want to put Jay's ugly mug on a T-shirt. So Amen, brother. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time, no, though. That's true. Although I do think, I do think we might have to to uh, go out to our Facebook archives and find some customer pictures. Well, or or past employees that oh yeah we're still really good friends with. That's an even better idea. We should have texted him actually. Yeah. Um. So again, um, I've got Jay here with me. Here, Jay, I'll stand up so and I'll go over here so you can get in the the frame. Um. Happy everybody could join us today. So I've kind of already given you a little bit of a synopsis um, of what we're going to do. But today's all about being creative. I know, especially with everything that's going on um, and has been going on over the course of the last several months, you know, people are probably at kind of their wits end of uh, trying to come up with more and more ideas for their customers uh, to sell to them. So that's we want to kind of come up with something for you to be able to offer that you may not have thought of before. Yeah, we're uh, a couple things I want to mention. So we're going to be using different technologies today too. We're using the GoPro 100 and we're going to be using the QS2536. And, uh, the level of halftone detail that you get with both is just amazing. Uh, in business, people are always looking for solutions and, and we feel that our niche in the market is that we are a solution. Uh, printing, uh, printing solution. Uh, there are so many people who don't want to get into screen printing because they don't want to have to deal with the emulsion, chemicals, the water, uh, the sewage, uh, the, the general mess that's there. And so this is a good, viable, uh, also an eco-friendly type of solution uh, because you can get rid of all of that. I've talked to a customer this morning and a gentleman and is having problems with uh, with wastewater going out and this is a perfect solution for him uh, because he could eliminate all that and eliminate all that other equipment. You're not going to need your light table anymore, washout sink, knockout booth. Um, there's no direct to screen. It eliminates all that. We jokingly 
we say we take the fun out of screen printing. So we get rid of all that stuff that is not the most fun part of screen printing. Another thing is it allows you to print. You don't make money making screens. You make money screen printing. And so and that's where we step in at and, and, and fill that spot up. Um, and Deb, I just responded back to you uh, by typing, but yes, um, if you're watching today, you any of our Facebook Live uh, video feeds, once we're done, they automatically save to our Facebook uh, page. You can find them either by scrolling down, if you want to scroll back to uh, what we've been doing these for two months now. Yeah. Um, or if you want to just go to our video section of the Facebook page, they'll be there as well. So. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll, we'll start off with the uh, first one. Uh, we had a uh, person who uh, emailed us in and, and sent us a picture uh, yesterday. And I promise, guys, if you watched last week, I promise I retaped uh, the stand that we have here. <laughs> so we'll try not to uh, get the GoPro to fall, fall off. So I don't know if you can see how well you can see the photograph. I'll scroll through it. Um, the lady's name is Carrie McCollum, and uh, this is a piece of artwork that she had. Um, she sent in yesterday a picture of the Eiffel Tower. I, I love the great contrast in the artwork. Um, and so all I'm going to do with the QS here is, is it's, such, it's so easy. You can just go uh, take a JPEG picture and then simply go into Preferences, Image, and I'm going to set this for 60 lines per inch. That works really well with this 120 mesh that we're using today. And just as a reminder, everybody, if you have a question or something throughout the, uh, the Facebook Live, please definitely uh, put it out there um, so that we can answer it. We'll answer it to the best of our ability right here and now. So. All right, so data's being sent over to the uh, to the QS. I'll get a little beep here in just a second. And when I do, I'll hit start, and it'll roughly take about 90 seconds to burn the screen. <laughs> and what happens is, some of you guys already know this, so our mesh is already coated. It's got a PET coating on the back side of it. So there's mesh on this side and a PET coating with a light silicone layer over the top of that on the back side. So this is solid. You cannot print through it. The thermal head is going to heat up and put a dot wherever we want ink to go through at. Um, and I say a dot, now if it's a, a vector piece of art, it'd be a solid block, but it is going to heat up and uh, melt away the pet covering wherever we want ink to come through. The resolution on it is 1200 DPI, which is, uh, you know, it, it'll make a dot smaller than you can push plasticol ink through. It, it's a very, very detailed process. And so you guys probably can't, like I'm sitting here watching part of the video, and that arm is actually moving. It moves pretty slow. It goes all the way down the screen, uh, and then it'll come back. And many of you may have already seen this before, but I know probably on video it's a little bit tough to be able to see. So... We have done, I, I, I don't think Jay said this, but for this photograph, we actually did nothing. I, all I did was I imported the, uh, the photograph, the file that she uh, sent to us and put it into CorelDRAW. Um, I put the, the text at the top. So the text at the top is actually vector and the photograph is going to be uh, the half tone. So, um, cause did you resize it at all? No. Well, yeah, I made it a little bit larger. Okay, so it was resized just a little bit, but... And obviously, one thing I want to mention is when you're doing something like this, um, it's, it's the old adage, you know, trash in, trash out, uh, or can't polish a dog turd. Um, you want the best possible artwork, so the higher the resolution of your image, um, to start with, the higher or better print you're going to get at the end. So, I don't know if you guys can see that. Here's your Eiffel Tower, and then went in is in vector, uh, and then she's standing here with her umbrella. So, we'll go over here to the press. I'm 
I'm going to add a little bit to what Jared said. Understanding the quality of artwork can can be a little bit difficult, and I'll try and make it as easy as possible. If you have, if if you can look at the file size, that generally is going to tell you a lot about that file. It's not always true, but it's usually pretty accurate. So, if you have, or, or if your question is, what am I looking for? The minimum I'm looking for. If you're doing a full-size print, 10 by 10, 12 by 12, you really want about a 500 kilobyte file. Uh, one meg file, two meg file, five meg file, even much better. There's going to be more detail contained in it. Uh, can you get by with 200, 250? You sure can, but you're going to lose a little bit of that detail. If it's 10, 20 kilobytes, you're not going to get a lot of detail with that. Now, again, that's not always true, and one of the reasons it's not true is because sometimes when people will get a file, and they'll grab it off the internet, and it'll be, oh, uh, I don't know, 19 kilobytes, and they'll pull it in, and they'll resample it as 300 or 600 uh, DP, uh, DPI. Well, what you've done is you have made a very large file that has no resolution to it. You may think that it's going to look good, but you can't take, you, you have to have the original file. You cannot make an original file any better with standard software. There's some enhancing software out there. It's quite expensive, but with normal artwork, uh, normal JPEGs, what you've got is your original. And if you, could, if you can, always go back to the original file that you had, and you'll get much better quality from it. So, got our image laying right here. Let me get a squeegee. That's a 12 inch, I think we'll be fine. And so pretty much all that detail came out that, that you saw in the original. She's got her umbrella. Uh, it even, the name, Carrie McCollum for Photography, which she uh, put in a knockout at the bottom is showing up. And so uh, if it looks a little faded at the top, if you look in the original, it's because it's, uh, the, the Eiffel Tower is in clouds at this point. So that, that's, that's rendering to the true original of it. Now, could we make this... Uh, even more detailed uh, with the resolution that we had. We sure could. We can go up above 60 lines per inch. But when you go to, and that's okay when you're printing on these flat pellons, but when you go to a t-shirt, then all of a sudden you're going to start losing the resolution. About 40% is what I had with that. Now, I know in the original here, that umbrella is red. Um, and if you notice here, it obviously is not because we didn't print with red ink uh, or a separated image. If I wanted to print this image and have that umbrella to be red, that's where I would have to use a separation software. Um, but, and you'll see this example here pretty soon, we, what this, yes, you know, and majority of this image is black and white, but I do have, you know, some color. What this kind of represents is I can take a full color photograph um, and be able to send that directly to the machine and it's going to render you know, the darkness of those colors into half -tone, different halftone uh, dots. It would be essentially the same as uh, taking this image or a full color image and going into your, uh, going into your settings and changing it to a grayscale. The RIP on the QS and the GP will do that for you. You do not have to uh, go ahead and change a color photograph. You can just send it as is. A um, couple things on half tones, and I always mention this in my videos, is keep in mind that when you're using black ink, it's a thin ink. And a lot of times when you go to print, it's going to look a little, a few shades darker than what the original is. So you might want to think about lightening up your photograph. Um, you can do that in several ways. One way is just to lighten up the values on it. And number two, you can turn the gamma up and we find turning the gamma up 2.5 or 3.5 is usually 
a pretty good compensation for black plastisol ink to get you back to the original uh, original piece. So this is just one hit. The other thing that I want to talk about with something like this picture is the more times I go over it with ink, the more I'm going to lose detail. So like the Eiffel Tower, all the small little pieces of the Eiffel Tower, the, the supports, those would eventually fill in because the more ink you put down, the more it's going to dot gain or spread on you. So you want to, you want to hit these with as little ink as you can. So, so Carrie, there's a, a shirt that we're going to send to you. Uh, one thing right quick, and I'll let Jerry check, see if we've got any messages. Um, I'll show you guys. Carrie, if, Carrie says looking good, guys. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. If you, you let's say you're doing a, a run of 100 of these shirts, and you notice it getting darker and darker, what's happening at that point is where you are pushing ink through the squeegee, you're actually mashing ink through the screen. And... So if we pretend that our hole is this big around, we're, we're looking under the microscope now. When we go to print, say it's the outside of this, when we put ink through it, it doesn't print this size because you're pushing down on the squeegee. It actually prints percentages bigger. It uh, prints a percentage bigger. It leaves that extra distance between here and wherever you mash the ink through on the back side of the screen. And this compounds every time you put a squeegee to it. So what you may find is that if you're in a long run and it's starting to darken up, what you can do is clean your screen. And it's not real difficult. All you want to do is get all the ink out of the image area. So if you're a pull person, just push all the ink out of the image area. Get all of it there. And then, gently wipe the back of the screen. Now, you don't need to use any sprays to do this. All you're trying to do is clean up the dot gain that's onto the back of the screen. And Jared will agree with me when I tell you this. Once you get done cleaning the back of the screen, always always do a test print before you go back into production because if you have a piece of tape on the back of the screen and you're wiping it down there's a tendency for that ink to grab on that tape and then you go print your first production shirt now you got ink on the you know unwanted ink on your production shirt so well, make sure to always use a uh, 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 uh make sure to always do a test print before you go back to production well, yeah, and the other thing is, you know, what I've always found is, you know, this is the slick side of our mesh. So when you go to, to uh, wipe the screen down, you're going to end up with, with those smear marks all around just on the back side of the mesh. Um, so a lot of times I will take a, one paper towel, wipe the back of the screen initially. Then I'll take another dry paper towel and just wipe, wipe it one more time. But this time I'm more concentrating on the areas that don't have, have ink. The ink in them. Yep. And that's exactly what I just did. And, and then I'll do a test print. And see, this is what I my last rub with it. Now, if you keep rubbing at it, there's going to be ink that's in there. So you, you got a choice. You can stand here for 20 minutes trying to get that ink completely out. But you don't have to. All you're worried about is the secondary ink that's on the back of the screen. So that right there is not going to show up once I get to that point. So let's print another pill you on got, You got one on there already. Oh, I got one And uh, Don Burrow says hello. Hey, Miss Don. I get, I get two Dons watching today. I know both of them. Two. My wife and Don Burrow. I haven't seen her watching yet. Oh, she said she was going to watch. Uh, now I'm going to mention one other thing too. If you are printing half tones. Whoever is the screen printer, you let them start and you let them finish. Don't let anybody else grab that squeegee because everybody's going to print with a little bit of a different angle and a different pressure. 
So let that person who started the job do the job and finish the job. If somebody else takes over and they've got a different angle and a different uh, pressure, then you're going to see the uh, dot gain expand and it's going to expand pretty quickly. So try and let whoever starts it and, and then add another thing. If you're a push stroke or a pull stroke person, whatever stroke you start with is what you need to keep printing with. Do not push and pull, especially with half tones, or you'll get a massive amount of dot gain with it, especially if your screen's not tight. And uh, I'd like to say hello to a couple of new people that we've got watching. Uh, I think my dad's actually watching. And uh, Lizzie, good to see you. And, um, you know, I can't always see everybody that watches, so um, if you guys uh, can just st uh, throw a little comment out there or a like or anything like that. So, um, and like I said, you know, we'd love to be able to take one of your photographs um, and we can put it into our computer. You guys, it, those that may have seen me at a trade show, um, I would actually do it other than I'm running everything off of my phone. But... Um, I could actually take a photograph of you with my phone, plug that in, jump it off of my phone to the computer, and just drop it into, you know, just into a Corel file or into a, um, uh, you know, into a template like I've got. Yeah, you know, this is a wanted template that I got. Um, I just pulled that actually right off the internet and vectored that. So it's just something neat you can do. Drop somebody's photo in there and be able to uh, you know, create some sort of a shirt. In the past, I've actually also, um, I took a little wallet size photograph and scanned it here at the office and um, put a vignette on it. And what that is, is essentially it's a, a oval shape that fades to nothing. So you've got your picture in the middle and it fades out. So actually I can show you kind of what that effect looks like real quick. Um, but you can you can kind of get creative, just in the idea of the um, of the the picture itself. Yeah, this is kind of where over the years I've just kind of let my my um, mind kind of go and play around with things. And so let's do that. So. You guys can see I've not saved it, but you can see where I've taken all the harsh edges off, and it's more, you know, and I can change the setting of how wide out it is, and or you know, close in if I wanted to focus on more of one thing of a uh, of a photograph. You, know, you can play around with that. Then, of course, typeset around it. Um, you know, take all of. I always talk about you know graphic art and creating stuff for a T-shirt. It builds on each other, so. You know, you, you've learned little skills and things creative over the years, uh, like typeset and or curving art around a, uh, an arc or something like that. Put that to use here, you know, or the vignette, I'd used it somewhere else. So I just kind of threw everything together in one pot and got this recipe uh, or, you know, this final product. So it's, um, I always tell people in my, uh, training classes or you talk to me on the phone I, t I tell people really the only limitation that you have with your artwork and screen printing uh, is your own imagination um, you know I've many a time been on the phone with people customers and they're saying okay this is what I want to do and we put our heads together and kind of like, figure out a way that maybe I would do it they would tell me how they would do it and you know from there then we can get up to a final product so All right, so. Well, I was thinking, one we you want to do, if we hadn't had anybody send in a picture, we could do a picture of one of us. I don't know if I need my ugly mother. Well, I, th I was going to say, do we let the people vote which is the ugliest, which one's the ugliest that they want to see a picture <laughs> all of? All right, we can do that. So, all right, what we'll do, um, if nobody is going to send me a photograph, then, or say they want to send us a photograph, then do us a favor and vote um, just put it in the comments, either Jay or Jared, um, and no, Jay doesn't count for Jared, 
<laughs> You're not doing that either. I, I know how you work. Um, but put a, put a comment down in there and vote. Say, you know, put Jared's face, put Jay's face um, in the wanted poster. And we'll do that before we're done wrapping up here today. So, um, all right. So while we're waiting on that, where do you want to go next, Jay? Uh, I think we'll jump on your end of okay. it and let you go. Uh, all right. Your color ink. So here is another little facet that you can have. Um, this is actually more i got to be able to rotate it. Um, so what I did earlier is I took the GoCo Pro 100, and you guys have probably seen our uh, videos in the past where um, I put this frame together. This is our new GoCo Pro 100 frame. Um, it uses, it's like a screen door. Let me just, uh... Oh, I like that. Mom says, how about Ted? Ooh, ooh. All right, I'll go get the picture. Dawn says Jay's face. Dang it. Hey, all right, nobody for me yet. Nobody likes to see me. so far. Actually, probably people are getting tired of seeing me. I've been doing these videos so long. Um, but I have, I've created a, um, an image here. So next week, unfortunately, guys, you won't have to see my face next week. Um, I will be next Friday, hopefully about this time or a little before, uh, we'll be headed to the North Carolina coast. And um, so I thought, oh, you know, why not create a, uh, a shirt to go down to the coast? And so what I've done, and you probably saw it when Jay was showing you those, I've actually, I have two images in here and there is a purpose for that. Um, thanks guys. Um, I now have two votes. Um, but I've actually created a direct print, so where I can directly print onto the shirt. And then the one down here, I actually did as a transfer. We're going to try um, possibly transferring this. I've never done it before, but, you know, live on, live, uh, live on the wild side. So let me get... So I want this on a poly. So I'm going to do it on a poly, but it could also be done on a cotton. I mean, that's... This ink really that I'm going to use is not really um, uh, fabric specific necessarily. At least I've never heard that it is. It's not, right, Jay? The, no. Uh -huh. okay. um, and so with that being the case, you know, I can put this on. The, I'm using the, uh, these are the Sportex. And um, in saying that, we'll, uh, we'll also again give a shout out to our friends at uh, Sanmar. Uh, that help us out with uh, some shirts, uh, Sportex shirts. I love these polyesters. Obviously, I did not set up my um, uh, platen or anything. I didn't do any of this pre-setup or any any of that. But um, it's kind of a low. Uh, but anyway, they uh, they hook us up with with shirts there at Sanmar, and. Um, we are grateful for that. They always give us some good quality stuff to be able to print. My image is a little bit off center here. That's better. All right, so the ink that I am using, it honestly looks like something um, that kind of came out of a uh, nose maybe. <laughs> um, it, it has like a really tan olive weird look so what I'm going to do is stir it up a little bit give it a little agitation and I'm going to try to do this if I can normally if I were doing like a true uh, full uh, print job of this I would actually tape off the image down at the bottom the one that I'm going to do as a transfer so but instead, we're just we're just gonna fly by the seat of our pants a little bit. So you're probably thinking, like, well, what the heck kind of color is this gonna be? Um, it is a weird color on the shirt. I won't lie. All right. Um, 
So you can kind of see it's right there. All right, so let me go run this through the dryer real fast. And anybody know what this ink is? Um, those of you that probably have seen us in the past probably have seen this uh, ink before, but um, do you know what this ink would be? Oh, is that kind of getting in our way? It makes it look like you have a halo, and we all know that's not true. Oh, come on. All right, so let's move this down here. And um, so I'm going to move this. So about right here, I think will be fine. All right, so. All right, Jay, you ready? Yep. All right, guys. So you guys have probably seen these in the past. Um, these are it's just a common black light, but. Black lights, one of their biggest keys is that they emit UV light. Huh. <laughs> I thought we tested this already, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why is it not changing? I don't know. The ink's working fine. Yeah, because we, we did test the ink. We just didn't test the print. It's changing a little bit. I think the fluorescent's sucking it out before it gets All right, a chance. All right, so let's do this. Here. Here, Jay. Come here. All right, so we're just going to shut the lights off. Your tennis shoe strings look cool. Yeah, so there, now you can see how it's much darker. And so what it is, it's a photochromic ink. Um, and it actually changes color. Let's, uh, let's do this. And really, like I said, UV light is what causes it to work. So therefore, it's sunlight. So let's go. Can I get out here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. let me just grab. All right, guys, we're going to go on a little field trip right quick. Well, what did I do? i got to make sure the phone's close to it. Um, all right, so there you guys can see Jay. This is our cage where we keep everything kind of stored occasionally. All right, keep an eye out because as soon as it hits direct sunlight, it, it, there we go. There you go. So you should be able to see that it's blue. Honestly, against my white truck, you can't see, it's very, uh, weird looking as you go through here but um and then as soon as you come back into starts fading back out yeah that did sorry guys there's a little bit of a delay with what i see so i wanted to just make sure uh, but you can see how quick that changes so now what we're going to do and like i said i wanted to try this um and this kind of goes again to another portion of actually let's put this over here again um this goes to another portion of um what we're kind of going to talk about that i want to try so this is literally just a test everybody um kind of like it was with that black light i guess but um this is another just idea so what i'm doing is i'm taking that idea and I'm now going to capitalize even more on it a little bit. Same thing, this one is a cotton shirt. So, let's just flood this real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flood it, print over that a couple of times to get me a good amount of ink through there. Let's see if I can't get just a little bit more through there. So this, uh, this glow in the dark is in the plastisol family. So therefore, um, this technically should work, but Jay, if you want to grab that camera, we're going to go down here. I'm going to 
I'll set this right here for just a second. And this is another neat thing that we have or that we've uh, played around with is uh, foil. Um, so what this is, it's actually just, it's kind of almost like a gold leaf. Um, but what happens is, is there's no adhesive on this. So if I sit there and take this to a shirt and just heat press something to it, it's not actually going to uh, stick to the fabric. I need something, uh, some sort of a, a, a middle ground to stick that to. So um, you guys have probably seen where I have done plastisol ink, just basic black or yellow or whatever color um, here on a shirt and then put the foil on top. So I thought, well, since I'm going to do this, where my scissors go? Um, why not give this a try and see if it works? So I've got this really neat green, kind of looks a little bit like an ocean. And what I'm going to do, so you're probably like, well, okay, so, but that's color changing ink underneath there. Why would you want to cover it? Well, one of the things of the foil, so if I were to just lay this piece of foil down right on top of it, just like that, it's going to be solid and I really wouldn't probably see much of that color change behind it. However, I'm going to give this kind of a distressed look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crinkle this up just like that and then undo it. So it's going to give it a texture, but it's also not completely going to adhere to the, uh, to the shirt itself. Couple things to know: you can use any plastisol ink underneath, and keep in mind the foil is only going to attach wherever the ink is at. So it's not going to fill in areas that are not there or that are that do not have ink on them. All right, so I've got my heat press here. This is my uh, my Stalls Max, sixteen by twenty. I'm just going to lay that down and obviously I've got the, the color side facing up. I'm going to take my Teflon sheet, lay it down right on top of it. I probably need to increase my pressure. Somebody was down here messing with some stuff. Might have been me, I don't remember. Oh, too much pressure. And I've got it set for about 10 seconds. I'm going to pick that up. And then what I'd like to do is just kind of let that sit for a second and I'll actually take my Teflon sheet once it cools off and I'll take my Teflon sheet and just go over it again. And what that does is it actually helps to dissipate the heat um, but also to you know, pull that heat out of it um, and press it down to where it needs to be pressed if it still hasn't completely done that and we're and we're hoping that it actually will stick to the uh well, the it's, it's the print so oh, i thought it was going to sneeze but uh so that's what i've got now so let's put this actually on the table so that we can see the peel so what i'll do is just i will always just come from one corner And that worked just about like I was expecting. I can still see some of that other, uh, the photochromatic ink underneath it. Um, but I can still see the actual image even before it changes. So, you know, the fact that this turns blue, you know, it may make it look kind of weird, but just wearing it just like that makes it look pretty good. The, um, the one thing I will say about a foil tra uh, transfer like this is as you wear this, as you uh, wash it, it will actually slowly come off of the shirt. So you wanna make sure, um, you know, whenever you're doing something like this, decorating one of these for a customer, that you tell them that, you know, because you don't want a customer coming back to you and saying, you know, hey, I've had this shirt for a while, I've washed it X number of times, and all the foil's off of it. Well, that is just kind of the nature of that foil. Um, there's also, so, you know, that's one way that you can get this type of a look 
Um, and there's all kinds of different patterns and colors of the foils. But there's, um, there's also from uh, Specialty Materials, another one, it's one of our vendors. Um, if, uh, if you haven't checked out everything that they have, they're constantly increasing their, uh, their stock selection. But they have what's called their Deco Film Soft Metallics, which is, it's exactly what this is here. It's the foil, but it has a uh, heat transfer adhesive on the back that you can actually cut with a cutter. Um, so, and it'll actually, it lasts a little bit longer uh, as well. So, and we, we have that, we can get it from uh, specialty materials, but um, it's just kind of another neat idea, something to add to, you know, a piece of, of, your, uh, of your art. Now, you've noticed that I did not cure the ink before I brought it over to the heat press. I can, I've done it both ways. I find that it actually works better if I don't cure it first. Um, but I've, uh, we used to actually play, play around down here on Friday evenings. Um, we called them Fun Time Foil Fridays. And we, um, we found that it would actually work either way, but the thickness of the ink also plays a factor in that. The color of the ink, obviously, then will play a factor. Uh, your lighter colors are normally a little bit thicker, uh, especially if you're using like a max opaque or a white ink or something like that. So, um, so yeah, that's an idea for you. So, um, Jay, what do you got? Well, what I'm going to do is. Uh, <clears throat> I've got a screen. I've already set it up, and I'll, I'll show you what uh, what I what I'm going to do. And it was along the full idea uh, full idea that Jared had as well. Uh, so I'm going to screen print a graphic onto a shirt. Uh, I'm going to do mine different. I'm going to go ahead and run mine through the dryer. Uh, I'm going to kind of do the same method with the crinkle foil, and then uh, put it over the top, and you know, kind of give you an idea of. Uh, of you know, there's other ways that you can garnish your screen printing. Uh, screen printing is is great it's, it's what we live for uh, but there are also other options that are available to your customers and so this kind of give you an idea about that and the, one thing um also uh thanks megan um one thing that you i always tell customers if i print something um i always try to remember tell them to wash it inside out um, that's pretty much with any anything any garment that has a decoration on it whether it's screen print direct to garment uh sublimated it really should always be washed inside vinyl. It should always be washed inside out um, because you don't want the um, like jeans or something like that. Obviously, I'm a guy. I literally, throw everything in the washer and go. Um, so I will. Uh, you know, you don't want to beat it. Beat the the uh, print, whatever your print is on the. Uh, shirt or garment you don't want to beat that up so always wash everything inside out so thanks for that reminder Megan all right all right we're over here oh well let me show you the artwork first so what I've done here is a piece of artwork the zombie outbreak response team with a little biohazard symbol in the center of it pretty simple uh, you can download that biohazard symbol in a vector form just about anywhere on the internet um, anyway so Using the QS2536, I burned the screen and I've got it up already. And I was going to use the photo chromatic, uh, the photo ink underneath, but I decided not to. I think I'm going to do white. Tell them why, Jay. Well, because Jared decided to not use my squeegee. That's why. No. Why? I thought you said because it wouldn't matter because you, you know, the only time you're fighting zombies is in the dark. Well, that's true. That's true. The only time you're fighting zombies is in the dark, and this won't work. So I need to. Need some other kind of ink. So I've got my shirt on there. Uh, grab my white ink. Make sure I stir it really well. We have all these squeegee holders, but yet. They're always so far away. Now I gotta make sure I cleared the screen out really well. You'll see. That's the most critical thing in white ink printing is making sure you get that ink cleared out of the screen. 
and I am not going to flash it. I'm going to leave it just like that. Normally, I would go ahead and flash it and then put uh, one other single stroke on top of it to coat it, but I'm going to leave it just like that, and I'm going to go ahead and run it through the dryer, and then I'll put my foil on it. So I'll be back in just a second. I'll come with you. Most of you guys have these uh, dryer curtains on your uh, on your dryer. If you do, uh, if you hadn't learned yet, always make sure that the one where the shirt's going in is always lower than where it's coming out at. Nothing worse than the shirt getting stuck in the dryer. Not that it's ever happened to me four, five, ten, fifteen times. So you'll know real quick if you do that, though. It'll it'll start to burn on you, and and you'll smell it. So. All right, while well, Jay's waiting on that to come out, what I've done here, you guys may have seen in the background, is I have flipped my screen around. So all I did, I, like I said before, I've got two images here, um, one here and one here. And so all I did was I just, I flipped this around so that it is, uh, it's sitting in my, uh, my press the opposite direction and We'll get to that portion here in just a second. And then I'll have to check and see if we have any questions here. So where are you at, Jay? All right. Uh, I'm getting ready to cut my... I just didn't know where you were at. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. So what I'm going to do, cut me a piece off here. Got this kind of whoa, <laughs> kind of very very bright green. I didn't realize that was so translucent. Yeah, I didn't either. So this is interesting. I have never used this before. All right. And this is kind of something you guys can also do, like have a day where you just play and test and see what kind of things you can come up with you know i mean that's uh we do that quite frequently and ted's not always a fan but uh terry temp on the heat press i have it set at 350 uh for about 10 seconds um except smells like apples <laughs> does it really Sorry. yeah it does <laughs> um you know somewhere three probably 340 and higher I would have to go back and look at the actual spec sheet on the on the foil, but there is an actual um, uh, like spec of you know a set temperature. Through my years of of um, transfers, you know whether it's a vinyl transfer or foil or um, screen print transfers, I have always found that 350 degrees for about 10 seconds is a good place to start. And then if I need to, I can go higher than that. Um, so It's like cooking at the house. My wife asked me who they were putting brownies in last night. Said, What's the temperature on the box? I said, it's 350. She said, no, it's not. I said, yeah, everything. You cook everything at 350. You broil stuff and you cook everything at 350. I mean, that's the that's a best way to remember it. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and peel. Oop, I might have went too long with this stuff. I did. Why? Because it's just sticking to it. This might you be. You might have to peel quick. Yeah, I or, think I think that's what happened. Let me see. see. No, that's what's supposed to happen. But that's also your difference of. That's the other thing. That's the reason why I don't peel. Right. Is because what I find is if I'm looking for more of a solid print. Mm -hmm. By not curing my ink, it will allow me to... It will adhere to it. Yep. yep. I want to try a little experiment while I'm sitting there. And Jerry brings up a real good point, and that is you got to experiment with things. You have to play with things. Let's see. Well, and I'll be honest, guys. You know, again, many of you guys have probably heard me say this, but I never went to school for any type of graphics design or screen printing. Um, what I have learned has been from just playing, from messing things up. Um, 
again, taking you know one experience and applying it to another experience, uh, and that's kind of you know that's yes, there is some knowledge base that you need to have um, that I've just gained over the course of years, but you know for the most part, it's you know a lot of it is trial and error. You need a little more leverage there. So. You know you can loosen that a little. Yeah, no, it's fine. Did that stick at all? It didn't stick at all. Well, that's because part of it you probably already have the foil under. Yeah. It's part of this. That's interesting. What's that? Go a little bit longer with it. And the other thing is, you know, anytime you're using a heat press, there's always kind of, I call it the, the triangle. Um, there is your, uh, your heat, your time, and your uh, uh, pressure. So sometimes you need, you know, a little bit more pressure, a little bit less pressure, um, a little bit more time, a little less time. Sometimes it's a hot peel, sometimes it's a cold peel. And what you learn is once you press, you don't you can't press anything else over the top of it. So uh, probably <laughs> there's a barrier there. Actually, it, Jay, in order to probably achieve what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. I would have taken two pieces of foil. Yeah, actually, that worked out pretty well. Yeah. I but you could have taken up. two pieces of foil and laid them next to each other uh -huh. and overlapped them a little bit, and you would have gotten that same kind of look. I've done that before. So, there's what, that's what I was trying to do. Give it two different tonal ranges on top of that. A little bit, and you would have gotten that same kind of look. I've done that before. So, there's what, that's what I was trying to do. Give it two different tonal ranges on top of that white ink. So, I think it turned out pretty well. Alright, so what I'm doing here, I've been down here playing, um, is I have, um, taking a sheet of uh, transfer paper, all right, so this is just plastisol transfer paper. Again, I flip my screen around and the difference between the image that I've already printed and the image that I'm about to print is that the Oak Island portion or the, the text portion of my image is mirrored, so it is read wrong. Um, and the reason for that is because with this transfer, what I'm doing is I'm printing same ink, I'm staying with the the glow or the uh, photochromatic ink. We're gonna give this a whirl and see if this actually works. I have no idea. I'll be honest. I don't know that I get enough ink through there. Let's try doing the flood. Give me a little off contact there. Mm -hmm. See if that'll do any. Yeah. You got plenty going there. Eh, yeah, we're gonna try. Oops, as I tear part of the paper. So you guys can probably barely see that, but there's my images on there. I had a little bit of a screw up on this side, but honestly, what I'm testing here is does this type of ink transfer? Because I don't know. So let's go over here to plastisol transfers. One of the biggest things that you do is we're going to take our um, um, we're going to take our transfer now this ink is still wet and I just we've always had this box sitting here and I have this uh, transfer powder um, it is essentially a powderized adhesive is what it is so I just take a little bit of this And I just shake it back and forth. And wherever that ink is wet, obviously the powder is going to stick to. Now normally I would be doing this with just a color of ink. I could do it with white. I could do it with black. I could do it with just about any color that I really wanted to. 
Um, but I figured since I have the photochromatic ink out, I um, figured we'd give it a try. So what I was doing there, so after, and all of my excess powder goes down into this box here. And once I'm done, or you know, I get enough in there, then I can actually put it back into my container. I've actually had customers that will have one of the, uh, the big like Tupperware rubber uh, bins. And so in between their press and their dryer, they have this bin with a solo cup and they just take their, their paper, take the solo cup, dump it, shake it off, throw it through the dryer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go take this down. And one of the keys here is I wanna run this actually through faster than normal. So I'm gonna speed my dryer up. You're good, you go ahead. Now normally if I were doing like a true you know, transfer run, I would, I would make sure I know what my temperature is. Um, yeah, I'm all right. You don't want it to fully cure on the actual paper, so. You're looking at about 200, 200 degrees is enough. If you, as long as you stay under probably 275, you're fine. All right, so let's grab another shirt here. All right. And don't forget, send us some questions here as well if you guys get a, a question about something. Another note on the uh, on the transfer powder is, if you're not using it, put it back in and keep it stored, keep it tight because it's dry glue. You do not want it to get a bunch of humidity. You don't want it to get wet. The other neat thing that I like about transfers, and I really don't need to do this for this one, but I, I am just so you guys kind of get an idea. But what I'm doing is I'm cutting, I'm not cutting right on it, um, but I'm cutting around my image. If I had multiple images here, um, I could also do that. But it allows me to know exactly on this paper that I'm gonna use, I'm trying not to touch my image. Um, exactly kind of where my image is. So that's pretty much my entire image. Where it is and get an idea exactly where that placement needs to be before I heat press it. Hmm? What? Yeah. Wow. Well, you don't see it? I'm showing them up. Yeah, I'm still showing. Okay, so plastisol transfer, um, again, I do most of these at 350 for about 10 seconds. Jay, you have foil all over that thing, but it's all good. There we go. So now there is no ink on this paper whatsoever. All of my ink and part of Jay's foil is on the shirt itself. Now the real test. Let's just see, it should in theory, still change. And it does. So, Cool, I learned something new today. All right, so let's go back in here and we'll finish this up. All right, uh, let me get this off the floor. Hey, is that one mine? Mm -hmm. All right. All right guys, so we're going to start wrapping this up a little bit. We're gonna do the, uh, the photograph. So what questions do you guys have about any of this? Um, and as you saw, you know, these screens that we're using have all been created uh, using our thermal screen makers, whether it's, you know, I could do any of this kind of stuff. I can do with my GoPro Pro 100, my QS2536, the my screen even. Um, the photograph, you'd have to kind of manipulate that, that image before 
you send it to the uh, the my screen um, but you could very easily do something like that so um, but you know this is this is just kind of a tip of the iceberg uh, of things you can do that allows you to add more value to the things that that you're doing uh, you know to you know because the thing is is you know everybody likes the bling type of stuff that people do uh, whether it's the rhinestones or the glitter or you know even the foils now um, there's a lot of, of new different types of patterns coming out and um, you know so that is that's definitely something that you can add to a garment you know as far as your like the, the foil for instance or the the photochromatic ink you can add that and charge a little extra for it because it's something different it may not be something that the guy down the street is doing um, you know it's it's what sets you apart and what you may find especially like with the foil you know you get into like a cheer group or a dance group something like that and they start seeing this kind of stuff then other cheer groups may see it and they're gonna wonder hey where where do you get this stuff from where you know and that's where you start building that business now you may think okay so what do I do just create one of these shirts and let it lay around no not necessarily what I would probably do if, if I had a uh, um, if I had something that I was going to um, offer in my in my shop what I would do is I would actually go and create a shirt whether it's my logo um, I don't have a logo but if I had a logo um, I would create my logo and I would put let's say in photochromatic ink to where when I'm outside it changes color um, that's I'm very interested to see when I go to the beach uh, you know wearing this shirt on the beach if I get anybody that uh, that says anything or just wearing it around um, just because it's something different it's not something that people see on a regular basis so um, all right so Jay did you Ted said you got more votes of course he did I looked on there I could only find I, it looks like it was a 2-2 tie to me why who else? all right so any any last uh, Takers on, it's a tie between Ted and I. Wait, wait, Jay, do we get a vote? We get a vote, right? Yeah. I vote Ted. I vote Jerry. Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> Make the tie. Make the tie. Uh, Alright, fine, just do me then. Alright. Oh, wait, do we... Well, let's, uh... We're gonna do this. Yeah, we gotta do it right. Let's, let's we gotta do give it. the big doe eyes. Yeah, uh, right. So get this as close as possible. Turn it on. Try to get it to where it won't fall over. Actually, I can do it this way. I forgot I had done this. All right. All right, guys. So, ah, uh, I got another one for Ted. Terry says Ted. Terry says Ted. But we're good. No worries. All right. So, we talked earlier about about the uh, about the quality. So, on my phone right here, photo, I can go into settings, and I have different settings that I can do. The higher the megapixel the better the resolution of the picture. So I did put this one on the highest setting. It's about a 12 megapixel picture. Uh, that's actually way overkill. I'm gonna drop it back, go 16.9. You don't want people to see my beauty? I, it'll pick up every bit of your ugliness. <laughs> all right, I can't talk that way. Your mama's, your mama's there, so. I got like all my family watching. Uh, all right, so on the count of three, one, two, three. And we're going to have the get out of the dark in the background, but it should still work well. So uh, yeah, I'll go you. ahead and flip this over. All right. So now it's on his phone. It's on, you know, essentially your phone can be a hard drive. 
So what he's going to do is uh, he's got one of those fancy Android phones, so he actually has to pop the card out of it. Normally, you can just uh, I can plug my my uh, adapter in, but I don't have it with me. I've got a wireless charger here at work, so I don't have it. So this is how I have to do it. I've got a sim all my stuff saved on a SIM card, and so what I'll do is just pop open my SIM card, or it's a memory card with my SIM card. I was going to say, a SIM card keeps your carrier yeah. settings. And so I've got my memory card right there. Pop the memory card out. Whoop, they dropped my SIM card too. And everything else. Yeah, dropped my SIM card too. Anybody got a magnet? There you go. And take the SIM card, plug it in here, slide it into the side. Ding, ding, ding. And then, uh oh, my battery's running low. I better plug in. Find out where my plug is. All right, hang on. How low are you? Uh, uh, pretty much at death right now. So. Uh, well. There you go. Thank you, sir. And while he's setting that up uh, for the last thing here, um, you know, definitely we always appreciate you guys watching us. And uh, following all of our social medias, um, Facebook, obviously, Instagram, YouTube. Um, if you don't like, subscribe, follow, please do so. That would be great because um, that just kind of expands our reach out there a little bit further. Also, if you know, you've enjoyed watching some of these videos and you've got a, uh, a friend or a colleague or... Um, somebody that that is even thinking about getting into the business uh pass our information along and you know send them to our uh, our our social media sites there's also next is it next no not next week but two weeks from now um there will be another mvm breakaway session uh virtual trade show happening this uh this time around it's going to be based on all just starting up a business so as you see right here i have a this is a full color picture i took and I, i'm not going to do anything with it i could set it to grayscale but it's fine so i'm just going to go in set it for 60 lines per inch apply print hey that could be my new linkedin photograph i know, I know it looks good or better yet i haven't changed my facebook photograph in years maybe I should do that <laughs> so it's sending data over take it just a second and while it's doing that I'm gonna try and get my phone back and running here and so also, like you notice, he's hit print, and it's taken a little while to get there, um, or for the, uh, the machine to actually grab it. And the reason for that is the larger the image size, um, or the more detail, the higher the resolution, um, the longer it's going to take. So that's not always a bad thing. Um, if it takes a little bit for it to, you know, this machine sits there and spins and spins and spins, um, that just means you've got a really quality uh, picture or photograph or something like that and so again with uh, just like the one that we did at the beginning of the video we have uh, you know the machine it's just sitting there and it's firing little dots based on let me actually come back over here so where you see dark so like my my shirt the backdrop here where you see those dark areas is going to be a, a bigger dot like my, my flesh color, uh, the white print behind me is going to be little to no dots there. Um, and then, of course, the kind of teal color, the uh, maroon, and then the uh, kind of purpley color here. Those are going to be different size dots as well. And so it automatically renders those colors into um, different size dots. So see like 
Jeez, Jay. Made it big, didn't I? By 13. You gonna be able to print this on that? Heck yeah, got plenty of room, man. That's just what I need is to print this on a shirt. Somebody click like if you want Jared's face on a shirt. We'll send it to you. I get royalties every time you wear it, though. So, like, here's me just thinking out loud again. Um, here's another idea that we've actually we talked about earlier today. Um, those of you that call in and place orders, our customers, um, whoever just liked that, why did you do that? You're just, you're just egging him on. Um, anyway, we have, uh, our office manager here, Sharon, uh, we love her to death. She's a, a great asset. Um, and she is actually getting ready, uh, to have a grandbaby. And um, she said her daughter actually uh, just got the sonogram pictures the other day, and they were, you know, pretty much really, really lifelike. And um, we said, well, we could actually take the sonogram picture, put it into Corel, and we can actually print it like on the belly of a shirt. Uh, so when her daughter would wear it, um, the sonogram picture would actually be on the belly of her daughter. Um, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's things like that that catch people's attention that will, that, that can sell, you know, and, and the thing is, is you don't know that it won't sell or that it will sell until you try it. So another idea for you. I know it's kind of weird, but who knows? It might work. You're using a 17 inch squeegee. Find me a 14. Uh, there was one somewhere. Maybe not. Here, oh, okay. Good. You want one? Yeah, yeah. I want a 14. You want the, the double barometer? Oh, uh, that'd be fine. Might print a little light, but I can hit it twice. Thank you. Well, I hadn't been in the sun yet either, so. True that. All right, I, I did make the image like a really, really tall, so we're not going to get all of it on here. But I'll get most of it. I'll get the important. I'll get the important parts of it. So, <laughs> golly. So, I mean, you guys can even see like you know my wrinkles there underneath my eyes. Wow. That shaved head. You can see the little fuzzy fur hairs coming off of it. Yeah, you know. Run it through the dryer. So that, that's the, the flexibility that you have with the with the any of the GoPro products, whether it be the uh, GP100, the QS200, or the QS2536. Uh, the ability to go from a picture directly to a screen is just uh, amazing, and, and it does it in such a short period of time. So you guys can see there, that's, now that there's ink in the screen, you can probably see the face a little bit better there. Now, Jay, do me a favor. Um, got a question, actually. What if you were going to print that on a black shirt? You would invert the image on it. Um, so if we were going to, and there's a couple caveats to that. So if I wanted to print that onto a black shirt, what I would do is take the image and let me blow it up just a little bit here. Let's go there. I'll go, and this is in Corel Draw. I'm going to invert the area or the image area. And so basically, what that means in simplest terms is I'm going to put black bits where the white bits were and white bits where the black bits were. Because I have to print the, uh, since I'm trying to print with white ink, I'm trying to print an inverted image. Therefore, I have to use the negative areas for the ink to fall. Now, this image right here uh, would probably print okay with a, with a white. And the reason I say that is one thing you have to decide on when you're looking at an image, because some images are just not meant to print on black shirts and some images are not meant to print on white. And what I mean by that is if 
80% of your coverage area of the picture is going to be black ink, uh, it's not going to print very well. The same is opposite for white. If you're inverting it and 80% of that image area is white, it's not going to print very well. The best pictures that you will ever print is a good 50-50 balance, meaning you can use white or, or black ink. This image right here is probably going to be about 70% black ink. It will print black ink better. It won't print white ink very well. So you just have to take a look at the image and figure out which works better for the application that you're trying to do. And Jared lo looks good right there. See? All right. So that just about wraps up everything that we were going to cover um, for the most part. And um, any questions real quick before we finish this up? And like always, um, I've already kind of plugged them, but uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, trying to think, our website, you can also go to for more information, and you can also always call us, it's 800-597-9530. Anything you need to add? Info at expressscreen.com. Um, if, if you are interested in one of the products and you want to see a little bit more of a demonstration, we do also offer uh, uh, two types of, or several types of one-on-one uh, -on -one demonstrations as well. You can either go through, uh, give a, contact us and we'll go through um, uh, Skype or some other programs and, and we'll be able to demo and do a walkthrough and show you exactly what the features and the quality that the uh, that the equipment puts out. Uh, yeah, we've uh, we've actually, um, you know, with everything that's been going on with uh, the shutdowns and everything, we, we still need to be able to reach you guys, which is part of the reason why we started doing these. Um, but also we know that, um, you know, there's people out there that, you know, we can't get to trade shows right now, which is why, you know, MBM and NNEP um, have stepped up and said, you know what, we're going to, we're going to still do some sort of a show, and, but we're going to do it virtually. Um, and so, like I said, be on the lookout on our social medias. We're going to be posting about the breakaway sessions that MBM is doing. Uh, it's the 24th of June, I believe. Um, and it is free registration. And you can go out there. There'll be exhibitors. They're going to have different um, presentations on starting up. The, the whole theme of this breakaway session is going to be just starting up a business of your own in garment decoration, whether it's screen printing, embroidery, direct to garment, signage, um, awards, even though there's really not a whole lot of awards going on. Um, any type of, of decoration, uh, there'll be exhibitors there uh, that will have information on those things. So, um, anything else? I think that's all I've awesome. got. Well, we appreciate you guys spending some time with us on this beautiful Friday. We hope everybody has a great weekend, um, and definitely check us back next week. Unfortunately, like I said, um, I know viewership's probably going to be a little bit lower. I won't be on here. But uh, Jay and Woody, you'll be in good hands. Maybe even Ted will make an, uh, an appearance. But uh, hope everybody.